Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can see my videos every single week. You guys are gonna be so proud of me. But I got to relax yesterday and a little bit today, actually a lot of today, not gonna lie. I got to relax most of the day. This is not normal. <laughs> I don't know how to respond and it feels great. I. Yeah, I feel great. I hope you guys are proud of me, but I've been really trying to work with my team to figure out like how to outsource as much work as possible so that I'm not pulling like multiple all-nighters a week like I have been for the past few months. And so far it's been good. I have no idea if that's gonna continue, but I'm doing my best, I'm trying. In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to, yes, Laura Lee's skincare routine. And this video is also kindly sponsored by Squarespace, so make sure you stay tuned to learn more about that. One of the main reasons I'm actually making this video is because when Laura Lee uploaded her skincare routine, I haven't seen the video, I don't know what's in it. All I know is that it says trying a $900 skincare routine not approved by Hiram. I mean, who would have thought? $900 skincare routine. <laughs> that totally sounds like something I'd love. And I was like, oh my gosh, my name is in the Laura Lee video. Wow, full circle moment. I just have to say that. Laura Lee was actually one of the very first beauty YouTubers I started watching. I'm talking all the way back to the Brenda and Shirley show. If you know, you know. I used to watch a lot of Laura Lee's videos and I recently got really reinvested into her channel after I saw what she was doing for her niece, Erin, taking care of her, giving her a new life. And she just seems to have grown and developed a lot, which is cool to see. So that's one of the reasons I'm excited to see this video. But honestly, just seeing not approved by Hiram intrigued my interest. So first I'm gonna show you guys how I take off my makeup and then I'm gonna take a bath. Please I'm don't let it be I'm gonna do like please, my please, skincare please. routine. I'll show you guys what I've been liking lately. Okay, so first to take off my makeup, I use my makeup eraser. Oh, okay. I just got sent this fresh one, but I have a ton of these. I'm obsessed with them. Oh. The brand is literally called Makeup Eraser. You can also get these on Amazon, like the dupe version for a lot less. Yeah, they're really popular. Interested. Yeah. Um, and what I like to do is turn my water on. Let me show you. And then I get it wet. So these are actually meant to just be used wet and not with any. Yeah, always wet, not dry. But what I like to <laughs> Please do don't use them dry. Is once it's really damp, I like to put my cleanser on it. So tonight I'm actually going to try a brand new cleanser that I've never tried before. <gasps> oh! This is the. Pink Cloud Creamy yes. Gel Cleanser from Herbivore. This stuff sold at Sephora. It was sent to me in PR, so we'll see what oh, we wow. think. Oh, wow. Wow. Gotta get her going. Oh, oh, it's not quite. <laughs> I was like, damn, girl, how much cleanser are you using? That's like 12 bumps. I love that cleanser. That's literally one of my favorite cleansers of 2020. Sorry, I just got up and moisturized my lips because my lips felt dry. Anyway, <laughs> such a good cleanser, but of course it is like sold out whenever I go to the store to get it. <sighs> I don't know why that always happens with my favorite products. Like, why is it my favorite products that always have to go out of stock? <laughs> like the used to the people cleanser, god damn it. That thing is so difficult to find now. <laughs> I'm always scrambling to buy it whenever I can find it in stock. Anyway, so right off the bat, she's going in with an interesting strategy. She's using the makeup eraser, which I think is a fine makeup removing tool. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best because I do think that anything that involves like a towel or a cloth will have some mild physical exfoliant abilities because you are somewhat mildly tugging back and forth on your skin. To be completely honest, I haven't used the makeup eraser on my face enough to be able to really know like how intense the exfoliation is. Like I haven't used it every single day for a week to really understand that. But I will say that's usually why I enjoy cleansing balms or cleansing oils because they're much more of a nourishing, hydrating, and gentle experience that really works well to get rid of everything on your face. Um, but that's not necessarily what I find interesting. What I do find really interesting is that she's combining it with her cleanser to go in on her makeup done face. Now, I kind of think this is a smart strategy because the cleanser will kind of help to soften the makeup eraser overall and will kind of make it into like a cleansing tool. But the reason I'm not 100% sure about it is because I do think there is strength to the double cleanse system and at least going in with a makeup eraser before and then following up with the cleanser afterwards ensures that it's a two-step kind of by face system to ensure like twice over that you've properly gotten the makeup off of your face. When you combine those two steps together, there's always going to be a risk that you're not probably getting everything off of your skin. And yes, she could go in twice with the cleanser, but I will say like, I don't necessarily believe that it's good to go in twice with one cleanser as a double cleanse system because that can really easily overstrip your skin. Even though I love that cleanser, I don't think it's overstripping at all. I wouldn't recommend that. And given that it is Laura Lee, you know, she does wear a lot of makeup. So I would prefer to see a more robust double cleanse system, but it's definitely not in the worst it's so much better than makeup wipes and to be honest I'd have to use it more to be able to fully understand like how effective it actually is so not mad at this so far I love that cleanser oh my gosh <laughs> what the hell Hold on. okay here we go I do like to use a lot wow, yeah and then I kind of rub it into the cloth the 
Okay, are you guys ready to scream? All of the skincare products I have been loving so much were sent to me in PR, meaning I did not buy them, brands sent them to me. And these are the products that I find that work the best. Well, whenever adding information, I looked up all the prices and it totals out all this skincare costs about $900, guys. <laughs> $900. Yep. Again, I didn't buy it, it was sent to me, but this is the most bougie skincare <laughs> routine that you're ever going to see. <laughs> Maybe not ever, but it's more bougie than I thought it was. I apologize. <laughs> now, what I like you know what? I really respect that she is bringing up that she got a lot of the products, if not all the products in PR, and that it does equate to like $900 because like it or not, as a creator, when you get PR, there is a bit of a bias there. You're not going to be able to fully understand the horror of spending $250 on a moisturizer if you're getting sent it for free. And that's why whenever I show products in my videos that I have gotten in PR, I always try to disclose that, although my memory is really bad. And honestly, the products I love, I always end up rebuying because I just don't feel comfortable asking the brand for like refills and more product. I don't know. I just, that's something I don't feel comfortable doing. So I just end up rebuying the product anyway. So I kind of lose track of what I got in PR. And I think that really just comes down to me being totally fine spending whatever I need to on skincare products because most of my skincare products are very affordable. <laughs> if my routine was $900, maybe I'd reconsider. But I do appreciate that she brings that up. Go crazy. So I'm noticing uh, like. It, it doesn't also like look like it's working fix. amazing. I don't even know if I like everything, but <laughs> yeah, flip it over because the uh, soap is on the other side. And I'm kind oh, of keeping okay. it to one side of the cloth because I'll oh, use the other side. Okay. To okay, so she basically did a double cleansing step. Okay, you know what? I'm more happy with it now that I know that. She first went in with the side that was just wet to be able to break up the makeup and then afterwards used the side that had the cleanser on it. Is it still like the best thing ever? No, I still do believe that oils, whether they are a cleansing oil or in a cleansing balm form, tend to be the best of breaking up that oil that's present in the makeup and on your skin, but not mad at it. <laughs> Waiting on my bathtub to stop draining. <laughs> this is really loud and annoying. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> wow, right, she took a bath. Okay. Fancy. So, here's a step that I don't always do, and I think that's pretty clear, but I will take a cotton swab and okay. I will use some of the two. Oh, okay. This is the makeup melt and there's the for the eyes, I'm assuming. What I like to do is get my little cotton swab and swirl her around in there. And then, you, I, can't, I don't know if you guys okay, can yeah. see, but I do have some lash glue still on. And see, when I say I skip this step, that's because I always have. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I, I, I think that's awesome. lash glue. We love her. You really shouldn't be tugging on your eye. So this is <laughs> yes. more of a do as I say, <laughs> not as I do kind of moment. Uh, but. Wow, her skin is so glowy. Look how glowy and smooth it is up close. Wow, that is a flex. That is honestly a flex. Being able to be that close up to the camera with your face, harder than it looks. Um, Yes, I love that she's doing that. Be aware, if you are someone who does have lash extensions, please do not do this. That will make your lash extensions go bye-bye. And if there's one thing I've learned about lash extensions, they're expensive as fuck. Oh my God, so expensive. So just don't do that. But if you are someone who wears lashes or just wears eye makeup, I think that's a great idea. Because a lot of people tend to neglect that area and there can really easily be bacteria buildup. So I think it's great. Do I necessarily love that it's a Q-tip being used? No, but at least she doesn't use makeup wipes. I'm happy for that. Quick interruption to say this video is thankfully sponsored by Squarespace. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you aren't familiar with Squarespace, it's an amazing website building platform that makes it super easy to get your business up and starting at an affordable rate quickly and easily. Now, speaking as someone who used to do website design, which is one of my passions, but I will say website design is typically an expensive, lengthy, and complicated process. The amount of hours I would spend curating a single button or a single image or a single link was just crazy. And if there's anything we've learned about having a business, especially during COVID, you need to have a website to be thriving, but you don't need a professional designer, a professional coder. You can do it all easily through Squarespace. One of the reasons I love Squarespace is because they have pre-made templates that you can use to customize your website as quickly as possible. It's a great way to be able to make your business look really professional online without the painstaking hours of having to code or craft every individual thing yourself. And whether you're a photographer, a videographer, you have a small business, you have a skincare blog, there are so many different templates that you can use and make your own. 
And even way back in high school where my job was designing websites, I would always point people to Squarespace if they're looking for a quick and easy way to get their business up and running. So when you are interested in creating a website of your own, go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Hiram to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. You can find the link and more information down below. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for always being an awesome partner to work with. And thank you guys for always being awesome and open-minded to my alternative sponsorships that reflect some of my other interests outside of skincare. You really will be shocked how much makeup buildup is all up in your lashes. Yeah, I am it's true. not kidding you. Lashes, we kick on so much mascara, eyeshadows, primers, concealers up there. It really builds up. So, you know, one thing I've thought of, for a lot of people who wear makeup regularly, it may be harder to notice how much makeup is built up on your lashes than someone who doesn't wear makeup. Let me give you an example. I've never really been an avid makeup wearer. There was like a short time where, yes, I did wear some daily makeup, but it really wasn't much. However, growing up, I did do theater and I would have to do theater makeup. And whenever I was performing for like a week or a month or however long it was, it was always very noticeable that I would have makeup in my lashes. And that was after going in and really trying to deeply cleanse those areas and trying to get rid of everything everything, there would still be some because makeup does an amazing job of just clinging to that area. But when you're wearing makeup every single day and wearing eyeliner every single day, it's difficult to see that because you're so used to seeing that area filled in that you don't realize how truly clean it looks when you properly go in there and get everything out. So I think that strategy is great. Pula is a brand that like for a lot of the products, I do like the actual ingredient list. I just find them to be like a little expensive. But let me look. I mean, it is an eye balm, so I would want it to be like not filled with irritating ingredients. It has propanediol, xylitol, caffeine, fruit to antioxidants, hyaluronic acid. Yeah, it's a great ingredient list. I don't know that this ingredient list would necessarily best remove the makeup in that area. But it would still do something. Yeah, not really in love with this ingredient list. Uh, the second ingredient is polyethylene, which is an ingredient that's so common in cleansing balms and sometimes moisturizers. It's plastic. I mean, polyethylene is the most standard form of plastic that we have around us. And while it can be really good for creating this nice like slip effect on our skin, well, there's still questionable evidence about how it affects marine wildlife. And for me, in my opinion, I'm just like, if we don't have to use polyethylene, then why are we using it? There are some risks surrounding it. There are much better cleansing balm ingredients out there. But on top of that, it has bergamot oil, it has rosewood oil, it has orange peel oil, it has spearmint oil, rosemary oil, orange flower oil. Oh, y'all, that is a lot of essential oils. That is way too many for what I'm comfortable with on my face, let alone in that eye area, because your eye area is so sensitive and that's just honestly begging for irritation. So. I don't know that I love that. Yeah, honestly, looking at this ingredient list, I would not recommend it. If you do want like a good cleansing balm that's polyethylene free that does work in the eye area, the Then I Met You Cleansing Balm is my favorite. I swear to God, I try to use so many new cleansing balms, but I always come back to that one just because it's the most luxurious but deep cleansing and nourishing experience. Or if you want a cheaper alternative, the Neutrogena Cleansing Balm is a great one for just doing what it needs to do. If you're looking for a good alternative one, honestly, the Neutrogena Cleansing Balm is great. It's fragrance free, it's polyethylene free, and it's super affordable. So I just recommend that one instead. Oh my God, I've been filming for 40 minutes and I'm not even past cleansing. How do you do this, Hiram? And Oh good. Okay, so she's that. rinsing it off afterwards. That's good. I didn't want her to just leave that on her skin. Grease. Makeup remover grease. And you'll even remove some more makeup. So my eyes are all clean. I love that. Wow. Yay, Lash glue clean. clean. That's a rare moment. Uh, so we'll put this away. And now my my face is fresh and ready for skincare. So let's begin. I did really love this. This is an empty product for oh, me. This is the Ula okay. Henriksen um, toner. It's a dark, dark spot yeah. remover. It's really good. And I have a little bit left in a squirter bottle. So wow, she's really gone through the whole bottle. bottle. That's good. I've gone through a lot of this. I mean, I'm just going to say it. If there's one thing I dislike more than skincare I don't like, it's wasting unused products. At least you went through the bottle, and that's always what I say. Try to finish up your products before introducing something new, because it's no good to the planet to just throw it away if it's not properly being used. At least, like, give it to a friend or give it to a family member. That product, I'm almost certain I'm not a fan of. <laughs> Ole Henriksen Glow Tonic. I actually did a whole review video on Ole Henriksen, which you can go watch. I'm almost certain I talked about that product. I just don't remember exactly right now. Maybe it's because I'm kind of tired. Actually, it's probably definitely because I'm kind of tired. So it's the Glow 2O Dark Spot Remover and Toner. It's $29, not too bad. The second ingredient is glycolic acid, which I would be curious to see how much glycolic acid is in this toner, because from my understanding, it's not that strong. So I'm curious. The third ingredient is witch hazel water. It's not the worst because it's witch hazel water. It's not witch hazel extract, but still seeing it so high up on the ingredient list, I'm kind of like, eh. but right up 
up near the top of the list, right at the 1% mark, we have Parfum Fragrance. We know my feelings on that. And there's Citral, Limonene, and Linalool, three fragrant components. Normally, fragrant components on their own I don't find concerning because they can be naturally present in certain types of natural ingredients. But because this product has undisclosed fragrance, I really have no idea what fragrance ingredients are in there. It could be three, it could be 3,000. I have no idea. But again, that's just kind of why I'm like, yeah, not a fan. If you are looking for a good alternative, the Crave Beauty Kale Yaha Glycolic Solution is amazeballs if you have sensitive skin but you're wanting to use glycolic acid as a really good exfoliant. Or if you're wanting a blend kind of like this one because this one does have both glycolic acid and lactic acid, the Use to the People 11% AHA Exfoliation Toner is awesome if you are wanting some, you know, noticeable benefits but still at a relatively low concentration well tolerated by sensitive skin. That one's awesome and strong. You're definitely going to notice results. Or if you just want to take it out of the park by going with the strongest thing, the or Ordinary glycolic toning solution is strong stuff. It works well, a bit too well for my skin, which is why I can't use it, but it's still a good product and will definitely get the job done. Now that toner, do I recommend use for it every day? No, ma'am, I don't. I really don't think that you should be exfoliating your skin every single day, at least with something like glycolic acid, but just in general, I think it's good to give your skin a break. So not the best, but you know, not the worst. I'm really curious to see how this $900 is going to add up because so far it's not that expensive. The products have been pretty affordable so far. Please don't pull out La Mer, girl. That's all I'm asking. Please just don't moisturize with La Mer. <laughs> That's all I ask. I did Ooh. put some of it in here. Is I'm going to spray my face with a toner. Oh, she puts it in there. Okay, sorry. That took me way too long to get. Yes. <laughs> chest. That's fine too. Pat that in. And we're toned. Now, sometimes I use like an essence, and according to Tatcha, which they have one, it says like it's like. <laughs> good to help the products absorb into your <laughs> skin which i don't really know how factual that is um because when i worked at the dermatologist i ain't never heard anything about an essence before so maybe that's like a newer thing i don't know the scientific proof on that. <laughs> hey, I'm glad she admits she doesn't know. We stand honesty. I mean, I will say I've always been a little bit skeptical of the whole essence is necessary for products to be able to be absorbed into your skin better and for them to penetrate deeper and all this kind of stuff. I, most of the time, I just believe that's marketing BS and that companies say that to get you to buy more products. But there is some truth to water being applied to the skin helps to retain more moisture and hydration. At some level, that is true, which is, I guess, the benefit of an essence. I've always been the person who I like essences. I think they're great. Do I think they're necessary in every single skincare routine? No. And it really comes down to the essence, but essences have some incredible ingredients. After we've toned the skin, I have like some dark spots. These are not well, not bad. by the way. They're not bad. Like dark spots. That's why I use that toner. I like to use the TNS Advanced Serum by Skin Medica. This is one of the skincare Ooh. products that I use when I work at the dermatologist. And yeah, you can put it on your face in the morning and at night. I it looks really so fancy. I already know this product is going to be so expensive. At night. I get a little lazy with my morning skincare routine. Ooh, I hope you're so wearing sunscreen. I just hope you're wearing enough sunscreen. Out. There's like a clear one and a creamy one. Skin Medica, from my knowledge, remembrance, memory, is really expensive, but I can't remember. <gasps> Okay, yeah, this is why it's a $900 routine. <laughs> $281, mm, and it's only one ounce, oh my God. Let me look at the ingredients. Oh, it says the human fibroblast conditioned media. I'll be 100% honest, I don't know what that means. Is that like human growth factor, HDF? If any of you know, comment down below because I've never seen that before. Human fibroblast conditioned media. Well, besides that, it does have ingredients like alpha arbutin, which is amazing if you're wanting to fade dark spots, get rid of hyperpigmentation, has shea butter, a peptide complex, phospholipids, ubiquinone. It has parfum fragrance. I knew it was there. I just knew. Why can't really luxury expensive brands ever be fragrance free? I don't understand. It's like once you pass the $150 per product mark, they're never fragrance free. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's because people want to feel the luxurious experience. And part of that is fragrance. That's the whole reason people love luxury skincare. But yeah, it has linalool, geraniol, and isoeugenol. I mean, it's not the worst ingredient list I've ever seen. Like there's definitely some really power packed ingredients in this but I'm not paying $281 for it. Well, I guess neither does she. I mean, she says she got it in PR, assuming she got this product in PR, which, you know, in that case, work. Any company that charges that much for a product, I'm just like, I don't know if I trust you. That's just outrageously expensive. And I will rub that all over and I always put skincare on my neck. You can also push Good. up, but, you know, like push up, it makes all the difference, but I don't really know. I'm like, is that a gimmick? Mm, could be. <laughs> okay, moving on. This is another new product like I've been trying out by oh. Lancome. Boop. 
Their skincare is like really luxe, so Lancome. I don't understand the bottle on this. Like, was this supposed to be a dropper? I don't know. <laughs> I just oh, wow. wore a tiny bit out on my hand and added to my face. I've never seen that product before. That packaging though, is so extra. I love it. But if you haven't watched my video, The Truth About Lancome, probably one of the hardest videos I've ever gone against a brand. Lancome skincare is just one of those brands that I think resembles the epitome of bad luxury skincare because the ingredients they use, I'm just so often unimpressed and left feeling like the formula is probably really low quality. I'm sorry, Lancome, but seriously, you could do better. But I don't know the ingredient list of that product, so let me give it a fair chance and look it up. Okay, here we go. So it's the Lancome Absolute Overnight repairing by ampule serum it is hundred and fifty dollars yep that's expensive oh my god why am i getting so tired all of a sudden Whew. but there may be hope because ampules tend to be really really concentrated and usually made without a lot of irritating ingredients so i'm excited to see so the third ingredient is bifida ferment lysate, which is great. That's one of the, you know, ingredients that's really present in Korean skincare, but that Lancome touts for a lot of their products. I'm just happy to see that it's actually at the top of the ingredient list in this product, unlike some of their other products that they claim has the same ingredient. There's sunflower seed oil, meadow foam seed oil, hydrating and moisturizing agents along with salicylic acid, antioxidant rich extracts. Oh, God damn it, it has fragrance. <sighs> I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, it's Lancome. I mean, they love their fragrance. Rose flower oil, limonene, geraniol, citronellol, and linalool. Whew, that's not looking good, folks. I mean, to be fair, this is a lot better than what I've seen with Lancome. Typically, I find denatured alcohol is like the second or third ingredient in a lot of their products. And I'm like, look, if I'm gonna be thinking like 80 to $200 per product, I don't want it to be primarily made up of really cheap ingredients like denatured alcohol. Um, to no one's surprise, I would not purchase this product. <laughs> Move on to moisturizer. My skin is pretty darn dry, and this oh, okay. is what really helps my skin. I have been using the <gasps> Delicate. Oh, yes. I love Alps, that one. My second container of it. And yeah, that one's yeah, great. I just put a lot of it. Oh, wow. She puts a lot. All over. That is a lot. Like a lot. Dang, my oily ass skin could never. That amount would last for years. Oh, that's good. She takes it all the way down. So yeah, I've actually talked about that product before in the past. It's great. It has so many incredible ingredients that are good for soothing and repairing the moisture barrier. It's fragrance free. Really high quality product that works well to deeply nourish and moisturize the face. That was a pleasant surprise. Okay, Laura, I see you. This is not all bad. That's a good product and a good brand. I do like Kate Somerville. And then I do my eye cream pretty much last. This is the La Mer. This is the bougiest eye cream. It yeah. is eye concentrate. So just take a wow. look at that. Be careful, girl. And I like to rub it all. Every dollop is a year's worth of income. I'm just not even going to go over the ingredients because regardless of what I feel about the La Mer eye cream ingredients, the fact they charge that much for it is just obscene to me and I would never in faith good recommend it. But again, if you're getting it for free in PR, you better work girl. That's awesome. But yeah, expensive. You can already know that La Mer definitely won't be contacting me for PR. <laughs> And honestly, it's probably for the best. Oh, you guys, I'm yawning so much. Why am I so tired? It's because my body's like, Hiram, you've relaxed for literally the first time in like a year. Maybe this should become like a trend. <laughs> Maybe it's my body telling me that I need to rest more. Who knows? But I'm sorry, y'all. I'm rapidly losing energy. Good night. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Then I'll normally either use the Jouer Lip Enhancer on my oh, lips okay. or in my drawer. I also keep the Laneige. This is the oh. Sleep Care Lip yeah. Mask, yeah. and they're really great. It's like a sleep mask. Mm -hmm. At least she goes in generously. There you good. have it. And that is my skincare routine. Oh, okay. Uh, it does change a little time to time. I try to stay consistent with the same products so you get the benefits, because skincare is more so of a use time and time again kind of situation versus yep, like definitely. I use once and see results. So I try to stick to the same thing, but I do like to try out new things sometimes. Um, but when I try out new things, I try to consistently try them out. So the face wash this is my first time using it and I really liked it. It, it, it lathered up way Good. more than what I thought it was going to be. I yeah, don't like face does. washes that don't get foamy or really creamy on your face. I, I want to feel like it's really cleaning my skin. So I like this and I like oh, good. this again. That being said, I'm 
this vlog. Well, 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 what are my final thoughts? You know, I'm just gonna say it's not as bad as I expected it to be. Pretty simple, not complex, and there were a few products in there that I liked. I like the makeup eraser, cleanser, and her moisturizer. The rest of the products we can pretend don't exist. <laughs> I mean, the other products, I don't think they're worth it, personally. I will say for the last sleeping mask, if you don't know my thoughts about Laneige um, and their sleeping mask, I'm just kind of like, they're okay. I mean, they work well overnight to feel like your lips are moisturized, but the second you remove it, you're just kind of like, oh, where did all the moisture go? It just kind of works as a little bit of like a seal. So I'd be more concerned about what you're putting underneath it rather than over the top. Um, but you know, overall for a title saying not approved by Hiram, I have to say this wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Overall, I have to say as is usual with my philosophy, when it comes to skincare, you don't need to spend a lot of money on skincare in order to have good skin. And just because the influencers are getting products in PR does not mean that you need to justify that price point if it's something you're not comfortable with. And that goes for Laura Lee, that goes for me, that goes for anyone else. It's always good to be critical and smart thinking about what you're spending your money on. But that was so much fun. Thank you, Laura, for making that video. I enjoyed watching it. And honestly, y'all, I need to get to bed. I was going to film another video after this, but maybe this is my body saying that it's time to go to bed. Mama's pooped. And if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.